and a good morning, good afternoon, and a very good evening to you, the good and wonderful people of the tube. Hello well, today, hope you're feeling grand and always when your world. Hello to everybody. Uh, today's vid, everybody, uh, is about recarving a neck and how I do it. This is also how I remove lacquer off the back of necks as well, because poly lacquer tends to be a bit of a pig and sanding it takes forever. So I use a knife and I'll show you why I do that in a bit. I'm a bit devil may care when it comes to this kind of thing. Anyway, I've done this to quite a lot of guitars though and you know, I've done it to my, my bass and I kind of, kind of got a feel for where I am with it. But uh, I am going to be redoing the neck on the Stratelli, the uh, Fender Paranormal knockoff. Um, this neck's just too big. It's just too big. Um, it's just a little bit too much of a handful. Uh, I don't particularly like it. And I want to play the guitar. And before I fully review this thing, I can't have the neck this big. Uh, because it's, it's just tiring. Uh, it tires my hand out to play. And like I said, I don't have the smallest hands. Um, so if it's just tiring my hand out, anyone with a small hand than me is going to get... Yeah, exhausted. I, I had Queenie play this for a bit. I kind of like, you know, forced it. I was like, play this guitar. I need to know what you think. And she was just like, nah, it's too big. And um, I agree. It's just, there's too much, there's too much beef on the back of the neck. And uh, so today we're going to recarve it. We're going to get rid of uh, a fair bit amount of this. I have done uh, some measurement differences. And at the 12th fret, I used my Tokai Strat as a, uh, as a reference. At the 12th fret, there is another 3 millimeters on the Stratelli neck than there is on the, te on the, on the Tokai. And at the uh, first fret, just, uh, just below the nut, there is another 3 millimeters worth of material. So it's 3 millimeters bigger, this neck is, than the Tokai's neck, which is absolutely heavenly. Um, so... We've got a fair bit to remove. It's it's not going to be the easiest of jobs. It's going to take a while. But again, that's the point. And, and again, you want to take your time with this kind of thing. So, without further ado, let's go on with it. Uh, when I do this, I keep the guitar strung up and as in tune as possible. It, do, it is going to go out of tune just because of the, the nature and the angle I have it at. Um, but I keep it strung up because I keep going back to playing it to see how it feels. Uh... I want to know basically when it when it's right it'll it'll feel right but um like I say if it's wrong it, it'll feel wrong so I'll know where to go and also I'll know where to work so like for instance if I've got like a, a shoulder lying down here I'll know how to remove that actually I tell you what that neck is not very it's very lumpy bumpy let's put it that way that lacquer is really really lumpy bumpy I never really noticed that until now but uh basically the first thing I do is I use a just a usual knife. Um, I've had this knife forever. My dad actually bought me this when I was really, really young because I wanted to be like him because uh, my dad always carried a knife and I always wanted to carry a knife. In my, so my dad bought me this one and I've still got it and I still use it. And uh, I'm going to basically use, do this and I'll show you what I do when I get to it. Uh, another thing to note, eye protection. You know, Don't risk your eyes to lacquer check, uh, flicking off. Once we get through the lacquer on the back of the neck through to the wood, um... It won't be as big of a problem, but you know we're not going to be. Nothing's going to be chipping off. I'm not going to be gouging. I do apologise on my phone. We're not going to be gouging the wood out, so it's going everywhere. We're just going to be carving it in very, very thin, very, very thin uh, slices, basically. So, uh, oh my God, shut up! God Almighty, I hate phones. Anyway, you can't do anything. Who's sending? Why can't people just send one message? Why don't I send hello? Send. How are you today? Send. I'm good, but are you doing okay? Send. Just send one bloody message! Anyway, frustrations aside, it went off again. Okay, so let's get on with this, people the tube. Uh, I'm going to reposition the camera and get on with it, basically. Uh, what is going on? It's like a million and one messages. Anyway, we're going to start at the bottom... Uh, and just go for, and work up. Anyway, I'll, I'll talk about it more in a sec. So, let's get going. We've got a lot to remove. Like I say, it's three millimetres bigger than what I would class as comfy. Anyway, let's go. Enough waffle. Okay, people, shoot, this is it. Um, because uh, this guitar doesn't have uh, machine heads where the string goes inside it, the string is poking out, uh, I have my trusty pillow here uh, to keep my legs from being stabbed to pieces and or... Other bits been stabbed to pieces, as you can see. So anyway, um, 
let's get on with this. So basically, this is all I do, is basically go to the, where that curve is at the bottom of the neck, go there, and just scrape. All the way to the top, and invariably you get this. It's just like, you know, that's just lacquer. And I, I just keep doing that. It's, it's a horrible noise. Especially when the lacquer's really thick, which it is. Oh, there we go, we got through. So, I'm already through to the wood underneath. And again, this is how I remove lacquer from necks in general. I do apologise. And you can see, it, what happens is, it chips off. Uh, it's not it's not too bad, actually. If, I, if I'm being perfectly honest, I have done necks before where the lacquer's been way thicker than that. This one's not too bad. But, um... But basically, this is how I remove lacquer from next. Basically, just do that until I get down to the wood and then sand it. Uh, and that's it. So, and this is, and, and that is literally the technique. I'm not going to film loads of this because it's a horrible noise. But I'm not putting any pressure on the knife either. Like, literally, I'm not pressing down. The knife's just doing its job. Uh, the knife's really, really sharp as well. That's um, another thing to note, people, tube, is. The knife you're using has to be really, really sharp. But I don't want to be pressing down on it and wrenching it back. Because what you're going to do is you're going to you're going to rough up the wood. And it's going to be a lot harder to sand it out later on. And you don't want that. But basically, and it's just really thin, delicate slices we're taking off. We're not go we're not after like, you know, just like doing it in five minutes. Yeah, you know, I want I want to be at this for a good few hours. You know, to, to get it right. And again, you can... Uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but you can see the difference in colour where the real wood's starting to poke through into, in comparison to the lack of it. But that's what I'll do. And I'll, just, I'll take it up to the, the loot up here from this one down here. I want to remove all this section here. That's all I want to get rid of. And then basically once that's done, I'll sand it and, uh, you know, just finish it off, really. And we'll get, uh, we'll get there. So... Uh, I'm going to continue off camera now, people, too, because you've seen what I do. Like I say, it's very simple. Like I say, there's no pressure put on the knife. I don't want to be, like I say, I don't want to be cranking on the knife, like, you know, cranking on the neck. I just want to take the lacquer off at this point in time. So where there is any, just scrape until I'm through to the wood. And you can see when you're through to the wood, because I say, it changes colour drastically. It gets rid of that nicotine look and all of a sudden you're through to well bare wood and that's what i want actually this neck uh the lacquer's coming off this neck really really easily and i like that that make that's gonna make my life infinitely happier uh i've done this to guitars before where like i say the lacquer's been so thick on the neck it just took hours and hours and hours just to get through the lacquer and again no pressure and also, take your time. If, if you're going to do this, do not rush. It's really important to just go nice and easy. So. So that's the start of it. So hopefully you can kind of see there. Yeah, I think you can. Uh, that's how. That's what I do. And, th and basically... Once I've got the lacquer off, I'll start doing this to the wood, and I'll, I'll turn the camera back on at that, at that point. But for now, people tube, I'm going to get this lacquer off all the way down to the fretboard sides, and uh, yeah, and I'll, I'll be back in, what, but a split second for you, but it'll probably be a, about, I don't know, 45 minutes for me. See you in a sec. Oh, good over tube. So uh, this has took, like, no time at all, actually. I was, I was uh, massively happy about that. But uh, you can see here, all the lacquer is off the back of the neck now. I it, Again... I haven't taken the wood off. This is all just lacquer at this point in time. You can tell by the horrible plasticky nature of it. Um, but basically what I've done here is that's just the lacquer off. Um, and that's just down to the bare wood now. And again, that's um, an easier way of getting the lacquer off the neck uh, without using hours and millions of reams of sandpaper. Um, I've always done it with a knife, just just to scrape it back. Like I said, I'm not recarving the neck at this point. I'm literally, well, I might be like, you know, by the, the minutest millimetre, but it's not major. All I'm doing is I'm scraping off the lacquer. That's all I'm doing. So we have it off from the front uh, top of the neck to the bottom, and now we need to get on with uh, recarving the wood. Now, this does take a bit more... Um, Oomph, so to say. So when I do that, 
I am actually now starting to press down into the the wood uh, the wood on the neck. I'm not. I'm no longer just kind of like scraping the thing like this because if I did that, I'd be here all day and wouldn't get anywhere. I also re need to sharpen, resharpen my knife. So now what I am doing is I am actually digging in slightly, but not a great deal. And I'm always going in one direction. I'm not. I'm not doing this like up and down, scrapey, scrapey, up and down. I always go in one direction. Uh, there are times when I have a lapse of concentration and end up going two directions, and that always kind of looks really bad. But um, but yeah, this is what I'm doing. And basically, what I do is I just kind of start in the middle, basically over the skunk stripe of this guitar, and just work my way around. So unless you just find, I can kind of see what lines I'm making and where I need to jump in. So, and that's this is it basically. This is and that, and that, this is literally it. Hours and hours of scraping. Well, yeah, basically. basically. And basically, this is what I do now, is I, the guitar's strung up, so at any given point, I can turn it over back to its normal way around and see how it feels. And basically, that's it. You know, this is, this is, uh, this is, this is what I do when I'm, when I'm not happy with a neck shape and if a neck's too big. Uh, I did this, uh, the first guitar I did this with uh, was a high Benton I had, uh, years ago. And, um... The neck on that thing was like doubly, double the size of this. It was atrocious um, when I got that. I, I, I actually have never played a guitar with a neck that thick since or before. It was just outrageous. It was just stupid, absolutely stupid. But uh, this is it, people. Tube. Like I say, hopefully, hopefully you can see. It, actually, I've kind of just realised the camera's in a really bad position. That's clever, Dave. I need a camera person. Um, but yeah, and, that, and that's basically it. Like I said, I'm just, I'm just carving, just like scraping the wood away in like little slivers. I'm not after massive bits of wood coming off. I'm just literally, you know, literally this again. Literally little slivers of wood. And I can see where I've been. Like I said, at this point in time, I can see I've come to here. So I have a line there, and on this side I can see I've come to just below where the, the fingerboard starts. Um, again, this is why I always do it facing a window as well, because I can see where I'm going. So if I do that, that line appears. I can see that coming all the way up. And basically, this is it. It's as simple as that. And invariably, it smells gorgeous because it's maple. So as you're scraping it, you can smell it in with a bunged up nose like I've got. It's absolutely gorgeous, maple is. I don't know. Um, it just smells so good. And it, and this is it. Like I say this is just, you know. And it becomes like therapeutic as well. Like I just basically get lost in it and just get carried away. <laughs> lack, of, lack of a better word, there are people too. And there's nothing else to it. And again, this is the, the first guitar I did with it, like this was a high bent. And, and I've gone on to do a lot of guitars. Um like this and uh yeah it's it's just it, it I, I, I just I, you know it, i just find it works touch wood today and um basically like, the whole idea of keeping it in tune and strung up um like i say it just gives me that ability to just at a moment's notice go right how does it feel now because i'll know when it's right and i'll know when it's wrong um at this point in time it's still you know obviously i'm i've only been working on it for like you know what five minutes so it's not anywhere near so uh so yeah that's basically it people too so um yeah so i'm just gonna get buried in this and uh i'll see you again in a very very short while i say it's just a simple you know very simple process i'm not kind of like you know i'm not some kind of like mass major luthier uh job at this point in time it, it, it could it could be cut down this, this this job could be cut down if i had like a rasp i could rasp the neck um you know both sides and i could get it done down a lot quicker but i like to go really slow uh i don't know there's just something about kind of like having videos on the tv whatever i put on 
And just basically just getting lost in it, you know, and, and just spending a couple of hours just kind of like getting it right. You know, if, if, with a rasp, it'd be too... Uh, I, I don't like the idea of going too far, um, too fi- too quick, if that makes any sense. Uh, and I just want to be aware of, like, you know, where I am with it. So, anyway, so that's what I do, people too. So I'll, I'll see you in but a moment uh, when we get to the sanding process. So basically, I'm just going to, like, be carving this for the next uh, while. I'll try and keep track of time and, and tell you how long it took me. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you in a bit. Oh, you know, people tube. So, uh, apologies about the lighting straight off the bat. I didn't have time. Well, I haven't got my diffuser light down here. And it was really nice and kind of bright when I started this video. And now it's gone all grey. But here we are, people tube, so far. This is neck shavings. And uh, this is the neck. Let's have a look. So... As you can see, there's no, you know, there's nothing, you know, no lacquer left on there at all. And it's all very, very, well, it's a little bit rough, but it's nice. And it's a lot thinner. I don't, I bet you can't see that because of the light. That's terrible. I do apologize about that. Master Filmster, Mr. Whatever. That's not even English. I don't know what that was. Master Filmster. That's what I wanted to say. Dave Simpson. Yeah, right. Um, but yeah, it's better. It's better. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, sand it back because, like I say, it is a little bit rough um, after the knife uh, carving, basically. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go into a different room because it's disgustingly dusty to do this and uh, sand it down. And also, I noticed this last night, people, tube. Spot the different furls in there. <laughs> None of them are the same, are they? Well... Those two are the same, them two, that one's different, them two are the same, and that one's different. So, yay. But wait, you know, it doesn't really matter. Do the job. Uh, but yeah, so at this point in time, I'm feeling good, but I want to sand it now and get it a bit smoother, and then I can really kind of tell. So, uh, yeah, let's move through to a different room and do some sanding, because I don't want to do it in here, because it becomes even messier than this lot here. But yeah, this is it. This is this is neck wood. There's a little, little bits of lacquer in there. But uh, that's it, and that's 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 what I you know, that's what it turns out to be. It looks like some kind of weird creature. <sighs> anyway, let's go sanding. Oh, another thing to note, people with tube quickly actually before we get any further. Um, I forgot to mention this, and I remembered it as I needed it. So uh, when I get to a certain point with the big knife here, this one, uh, I actually switch to my trusty Swiss Army pen knife. And uh, basically what this one does, the tiny little blade on this one, is it just starts to take tinier slivers out, basically. Like So you go from, kind of like, if I can get one out here. So you go from, like, this size to... Um, ah, there we go. There's, there's, uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see this. But you go from that to stuff like this, like, really fine. It's really, you know, it's like a millimetre, basically. It starts taking, like, a millimetre-ish out of uh wood instead of like you know the big kind of chunk like that uh it starts to take a bit more you know it's a little bit more precise if you will if this isn't precise at all but you know what i mean so anyway uh grab a sandpaper let's go sanding i'm just going to tidy all this lot, lot up as well because uh you know this needs to go into bin um smells really nice though oh it's gorgeous it smells maple oh, heaven back in a sec Okay, Hoover Tube, so we're in a different room. Time for sanding now. Um, basically, 180. Let's go. This is quite boring. This is the bit I don't enjoy. So it just takes forever. Just trying to get uh, any of the uh, knife marks out, any, lo any kind of like lines. Just trying to make it as smooth as possible. I do think uh, that it is where it needs to be. I don't think I need to take any more out of the neck. I kind of don't want to take any more out of the neck. It's quite um, vintagey at this point in time. It feels like a like a sixty spendo, which is quite nice actually. Um, the wood actually was very pleasant as well. Uh, some maple can be quite tough, but the ma uh, the maple on this neck is quite quite easy to work with. It, it, I think it I think it still took me about I think it took me about an hour and a half uh, to get this down to where we are now. Give or take. Anyway, let's put it that way. 
And this is it. Uh, basically the final final leg of recarving this net, really. Could it be classed as recarving? I don't know. Answers on a postcard. But again, what I'm trying to do is just basically sand out any of the um, bits where I've slipped. So there's a there's a notch here, there's a bit there's a bit there, and there's a tiny bit there where basically with the knife when I was when I was scraping away, I kind of I, I kind of just dug in too far, and it's not enough to ruin it. I can easily sand it out. That that one's probably the, this one here is probably the biggest at the top of the skunk stripe because the skunk stripe's pretty awful, uh, and um, I accidentally dug. Well, I was scraping upwards. And uh, my knife accidentally dug in across like there. And uh, hopefully you can see this okay through the cube. I can't really, this is my main color. I wish this kind of like screen had like a lock so I could just lock it into position. Um, like picture wise, cause it self orientates. Anyway, shut up Dave. Um, yeah, slipped of his top and dug a, a bit out of the neck. So I'm not happy about that. Um, but, it's gone. Ta-da. That's okay. But again, I don't enjoy sanding. It's a bit of uh, doing this kind of work that I absolutely despise. Give a the tube. I really do. But basically what I try and do is once I've got kind of most of the... Um, like knife marks out, which there isn't many. Uh, this is a few places obviously where I started, like aside from the bottom upwards where I'd kind of dug in the knife and maybe got a bit overzealous at one point and went crack into the neck and made a tiny little indent, which basically sands out as easy as that. Um, it's actually all right, it's not bad at all. Uh, let's do the other side, oh God. So again, more indents up this top end here, where again, I dug, I dug the knife in maybe a little bit too kind of uh, vigorously, if you will. So again, blue, pretty much gone already. That's all right. So. One, of the, one of the important points as well, people too, is just to keep feeling the neck. Cause this feels fantastic now. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I'm gonna take any more out of it. I might have to shape it a little. I don't know at this point in time, but it does feel like a really nice C shape. Like there's no lumps and bumps. The sandpaper's just getting rid of all the, the ridges and whatnot. There's a few ridges down the uh, fretboard edges, which again, to be expected, I ain't got to those bit yet. But that feels pretty spot on to me, people do. I'm really happy with that. Really happy with that. I need to go over this, the top of the skunk strap a bit more though, because we're not, we ain't there yet, and I'll be able to feel that when I play. Uh, it's not going to be a major issue by any stretch of the imagination, but I'm getting there, getting there. It's going to get a new bit of sandpaper. I mean, I'm sure that bit's fine, but I do like to work with new bits quite often, especially doing bits like that. Another thing I like to do Peter, is when I'm sanding like one particular spot, because I'm basically just sanding this top bit here, is do the whole bit around it, but I curve the sandpaper over to, to, to keep off, well, keep kind of a, the radius of the net really, the, the curve. Again, I'm probably doing like a million things wrong. Like I said, I'm no good at particularly any of this kind of stuff. It, it, I, I can do it so it works. Let's put it that way. <laughs> But um, I'm not like a Luffy or anything. I don't claim to be. But I just wanted, I just wanted to show you what I do basically when um, it comes down to kind of like yeah, because I really like this guitar. I really, really, really love this guitar, and I kind of don't want to have to get rid of it just because the neck's too big. So if there's anything I can do to just make it a bit more easy on me, then that's what I'll do. I still not happy with that bit. But anyway, like I say, definitely not. 
Alethea. Never my uh, forte, this isn't. But it works, and that's all that matters. So I'm just going to keep sanding through the tube. I'm going to go through uh, different grits, and then uh, then we'll, f we'll then we'll finish it. I am going to leave the natural wood. All I'm going to do is put a wax on it, and I'll sh I'll show you that in a bit anyway. But um, yeah, this is basically it, really. This is the uh, second to last phase. I need to sand it down through the grit so it's nice and smooth, and then uh, basically wax it. And then play it and then see how it feels. So, yeah, We're nearly in the home stretch. <sighs> On to 240 grit, wet and dry paper now. Um, I could probably leave it at that, but I'm not satisfied until it's perfect. So, more sanding. 400 grit, wet and dry. Uh, we'll mention too that it isn't wet, it is dry, so don't worry, people, you. I'm not gone mad just yet. Ah, stuff wet sanding in the wooden neck. Okay, moving along. 400, I'm going to finish on 600. I don't think I'm going to go any higher than that. I don't think there's any need. It's really, really smooth. So I'm going to do 600 after this, and then we'll go on and wax the neck. Job's a good one. Okay, with you, uh, finished at 600 grit, uh, done. It's actually got like a satiny kind of sheen to it now. It's like a, uh, it's not matte, it's definitely more satin and it's just as smooth as anything. Um, so I'm gonna leave it there. Like I say, it, is, it, is it neat and perfect? No, but does it do the job? Yes, and again, I'm not a Luffy. I'm no good at this kind of thing, really. I can I can do it so it works, let's put it that way. But uh, other than that, I'm not very good at this kind of thing. But that feels way better than it did, and it's really, really smooth. And there's something about having no lacquer on the back of the neck, which I reckon it's just, it just feels nicer. I don't mind lacquered fingerboards, but um, the back of the neck's definitely, most of the time, I prefer it with uh, no lacquer on. It just feels nice. Uh, so, yeah. So, let's go through and uh, finish off the Stratelli. Okay, do people tube. We are on to the final... Um thing of today, final leg, final stretch, whatever you want to call it, final finishing uh, of the Stratelli. Uh, basically, all I'm going to do now is going to... I could leave the neck like this. It'd be totally fine. There'd be no issues with it whatsoever. Um, but I am going to use some Monty's Relic Wax on it to darken it off a little bit because it's going to get dirty because it's going to get played. Um, and also, it'll, it'll just, like, you know, just... Add a little bit of protection to it. You don't need that. It's fine. You know, you can have bare wood and you can play on it. Somebody once had a go at me from just uh, on my jazz bass. When I did this to my jazz bass, somebody had a go at me once saying like, you know, oh, you should have finished it. It should be lacquered because you'll it'll get moisture in it and this and it'll warp the neck. And I went to a lo local luthier who I trust above all else, uh, all the people. This guy builds guitars for a living and has done for years. And I said, would it warp the neck if, like, he goes, no, that's what the trust rod's there for. So, uh, so there we go. So, uh, basically, I'm just going to smear this on. And it'll it'll darken the wood down as well and give it a nice kind of, um, nice hue. I suppose a hue is the word to use here. Ooh, what a lovely hue. But yeah, it'll just give it a little bit more of a, a tint instead of just being kind of like, you know, solid white. Again, I'm not putting tons on. I don't. I don't. I don't want to absolutely like cake it in the relic wax or anything like that because I don't want. I don't want it to go too dark or anything. But I want it to have a nice kind of colour to it, like that. Easy peasy. There is slight flame in the fingerboard. Uh, this is obviously fingerboard. It's, it's a bit of a weird guitar. This one because it's got a skunk stripe and the glued-on fingerboard. Normally. If you've got a fingerboard, you don't have a skunk stripe because they put the trush rod in from the, from the top. But for some reason, this has got both. I don't know why. It's not necessary, but hey, what do I know? Um, but yeah, this is the final finishing piece, people of the tube. Um, like I say, it's just a case of just getting this rubbed in. I say I, I like this relic wax stuff. It, it just it just gives the neck a bit more of a nat, uh, a bit more of a well, no, I can't say natural look because the natural look is actually just the white, but um, you know, just the bare wood. But I just like the colour it gives. It just looks really pretty. I don't know if it'll come across on camera very well, um, but yeah, it's really nice. And again, just put it on, and then basically once it's all on, I'm just gonna buff it off with a clean bit. 
of tissue paper. And we are done. All the um, bits where kind of like, you know, the, the knife marks down here and, and that bit up there, they all sanded out really easily, which is really nice. Uh, sometimes you get bits where you slipped and they don't want to sand out. Let's put it that way. I've got one on my Columbus base. It's like somewhere around here and it will not, like it won't sand out. I've, I've just got kind of like used to it being there and accepted it's part of the base now and uh, it's always going to be there. The really cool thing is though, it's not where your hand goes, that ridge. So uh, you never feel it. So happy days. But yeah, it was a, it was a big slip up that one was. Uh, but yeah, other than that, this has gone really easy actually. It's, I've, I've spent like a good morning. It's, it's took about maybe about three hours to get this done. So it's not too bad at all, to be honest with you. And uh, yeah, plug it in in a sec and uh, we'll see how it feels people with the tube. It might sound a bit weird though, because um, I'm going to plug into the Katana Artist and it will be behind the camera. So bear that in mind. It, but again, I don't want you to hear this guitar too well because I'm wait. I'm you know I'm, I'll, I'll we'll wait until we get like the proper demo of it done. There we go. Spot on, please. There we go. That is awesome. And I say, uh, hope come around here if I can get the camera right. <laughs> You can see it's like it's got a shine. It's like a satiny kind of shine. It's not. Check it out. <laughs> There's the lacquer, as you can see. You can see the wax on there. That ain't cleaned off yet. But that's the lacquer finish. And then this is the uh, finish that I've got now. And again, it's really, really nice and smooth. It's lovely. Again, you, go. you can see the, the mirror image of the uh, you know the mirror of the, sh the the actual kind of poly lacquer, and then just the natural wood that I've just sanded and waxed. Absolutely, it feels absolutely amazing. It really does. Uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, with you, but this is the bit where I kind of messed up a bit. But it's very rough and ready. This uh, this skunk stripe is. But again, why is a skunk stripe? I don't know. Uh, why there's different furls? I don't know. Anyway, let's plug it in. Let's see how it feels. All right, with you, we're plugging to the AC30 instead. I don't know why I didn't think of the AC30. Anyway, here we go. This is what it sounds. <laughs> It's not really about what it sounds like, it's what it feels like. <laughs> Finished? I don't know yet, uh, to be perfectly honest with you. I might have to go back and redo it some more, but uh, at this point in time, I need to live with it. To know. With me OD2. Thank you. 
to kind of like redoing it just like straight off the bat it feels great the way it is so there's no point to kind of like um going oh yes it's not quite right let me get the knives back out and start recarving it feels fantastic so i'm going to leave it there and basically live with it for about a week maybe two weeks i don't know we'll see how i feel and um if i need to come back to it i'll come back to it but that feels fantastic. The the, 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 like the open core position up here is so comfy. And then when you get down here, it's, it, it kind of beefs up. It's a very vintage feeling neck. It really is. It's very, very kind of like, um, 60, 62 kind of neck on this thing. It's really, really nice. Feels great. Feels great. I love it. Gonna go Rory Gallagher, uh, Irish tour kind of tone. Now. Sounds great. <laughs> to redo the neck is because I because I love the guitar uh, I don't want to have to just kind of go oh well it's not for me I want to get rid of it because I can feel something in this guitar it, it feels great um, so I just yeah that is worth it to me and also the, the no no lacquer on the back of the neck having it not being sticky makes it so much easier to play you don't get uh, caught up. <laughs> as well 
was key of their day. Anyway, people choose. I hope this has been somewhat informative. Anyway, like I say, this isn't like, you know, a masterclass in Luffyism. Luf That's not even a word, but you know what I mean. It's not a masterclass in that at all. Uh, it's just what I do. Um, like I say, if, if the guitar feels great, but the neck's too big, this is what I do. And like I say, the first guitar I did this to was the Harley Benton I had. I got a video on that. It was years ago now. I forget. I think it was 2018. I forget. And um, that was the first guitar where I kind of dove into it. And... Um, it made that guitar so much better. And it actually, it, it's a guitar that I regret selling. I had to sell it at the time I, I needed the money. But um, I missed that guitar a lot. And, uh, the neck on that one, once I got it sanded down and too well, wow, what did it? Felt great. And this is uh, another one of those. I think this is like, whew, I don't I don't remember. I think it's like the fifth neck I've done now where I've, I've, I've just took it down. It's not masses and masses out of it. I'm not like, you know, like just making it kind of like a wizard Ibanez neck, but um, it's just more comfortable to me. This is this just feels better. Um, yeah, it feels fantastic, it really does. Anyway, people, tube. Hope it's been somewhat informative. Hope you enjoyed this before it is. I'm going to keep playing this. Well, actually, I want to get something to eat because it's dinner time and I'm starving. I've been at this all morning, and uh, yeah, I need some food now. And then I'm going to keep playing this through this because this sounds really fun. Um, it does sound like the Irish talk kind of tone. Anyway, I can't speak anymore because uh, I just can't. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this video, YouTube. Uh, if you like the videos, videos I do on this channel, please consider becoming a patron at Patreon. Links to that down there, as well as links to my uh, band camp where you can listen to me music. Other than that, people, YouTube, I'll see you again very soon for another vid. Have a great morning, afternoon, and good evening. Goodbye now. Thanks for watching. Have a G major. <laughs>